Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. In the previous videos, I showed you how to plant up a fall vegetable garden. Now we're gonna start talking about composting in the fall. It's just a great time to start a compost pile. And the number one barrier to people having compost, besides land, the space, is they just don't get started. So you can start with a basic pen. We're gonna talk about cold composting and what you need to set it up and get it started. Now, you hear a lot about hot composting. We'll talk about that, and at the end of this video, I'll show you my whole compost setup. But today, I just wanna focus on this. Cold composting is not turning the soil, is not turning your compost, is not layering in different things, it's not adding really moisture. It's just putting in your material. This bin has been here for four years. I started harvesting beautiful compost out of the bottom about two years ago. So, cold composting is gonna take at least a year to get going, probably two years, but once it's set up, you just put in your organic material up top and you just pull out beautiful compost from the bottom. It's real easy. Let me show you what cold composting is and how I do it. So even though this is called cold composting, this is just basic composting and this is how it's been done for hundreds of years. At some point, somebody figured out that you could layer in nitrogen, grasses, and carbon, usually leaves or browns, and the pile would heat up. We'll talk about this in a future video if you wanna follow me. But three days ago, I set up this pile, and I just wanted to show you, let's see if we can get it in here, that it is heated up in the middle to nearly 140 degrees, and I think if we pull it out, you'll see the steam coming up. So this is heating up, Microbiology bacteria will break this down quicker through the heating process. We'll talk more about that. Cold composting or normal composting is you're just dropping your material in. You want to keep it four feet by four feet, keep it moist. Rain works perfectly well here, takes care of it. Maybe in mid July, August, if this is really drying out, I'll soak it down. But this is pretty much designed to let it go. In case you're wondering how the composting process works for this type or the hot composting, it's really my, uh, microbiology or microorganisms, bacteria, fungus, mold. Mold used to be classified as a fungus till they changed it over. But it's all these microscopic organisms working on the organic matter and breaking it down. When your bacteria starts to break down some of this, they secrete enzymes or chemicals and they're changing the carbon into carbon dioxide and that process creates heat. That's what you get when you're doing hot composting. This is just slower and there's different kinds of bacteria. I think there's, um, let's see if I can get it right. Shovel full nine. Nine and a half. 10. Let's see what I got out of there. I haven't even really put a dent in there. This is just absolutely beautiful. I highly recommend the cold composting. All right, let's finish up this space here and I'll just show you what I got going on in other parts of my compost area. There's a bacteria that works best at like 50, 60 degrees, will work in colder temperatures. I wanna say psychophilic, it's not that, it might be psychotrophilic. Anyway, there's a first kind of level of bacteria that works at cooler temperatures. Then you get to uh, mesophilic, which works at 70 to 90 degrees. And then you get to thermophilic uh, bacteria that works and brings the temperatures up to 120, 140 degrees. So these bacteria can work together. When you're doing cold composting, it's just a different group of bacteria working to break it down, different fungus, different molds. And throughout the process, heat is released, but it's the thermophilic bacteria that really bring the temperature up there. Why is that important? All these bacteria, microbes, fungus, molds, they need moisture. So if you want to have success, the four foot by four foot pile, four feet high, keeps the core nice and moist. All the microbes, all the soil life can do what they want. In addition to this, you'll get earthworms that come in and they start really digesting different parts. They leave behind castings. Worm castings have hormones in there, growth regulators, all kinds of great stuff. And again, two years later, I'm harvesting from the bottom. I'm putting new stuff up top and then the process will just continue. So let me harvest this up. And the only thing to really take away from here is a nice wide pile, moisture, 
And because this is a cold process, there's a lot of airspace in there, so you have oxygen going through. That's also needed. You don't have to turn it because there's plenty of oxygen in there and it's just going to break down slowly. When you're using the warm composting process, often the pile collapses, closes air pockets, it can start to smell, so you're turning this more to get that oxygen in there. So a combination of oxygen and moisture and size to the pile is what really helps hot composting break down quicker and it also helps your cold compost do what it's supposed to do. Harvesting is pretty easy. Whatever you set up, you want it to open in the front and this way we can get in and harvest. Let me use the smaller shovel. And in the, towards the end of fall, beginning of spring, I just open it up. And hopefully you can see right through here. And I am just scraping away the leaves here. And just look at this beautiful stuff. In fact, let me get the camera and give you a close-up. I mean, just look at the compost. Now, this is on its fourth year, maybe even fifth year. I didn't harvest it last year. Look at all this beautiful stuff. And I would just, you can even see a worm right in there. Cold composting. You see a little bit of clay soil in there. Sometimes I'll throw in some scraps of weeds that have clay on there. Upper top, more like worm castings. This is just great stuff. So, I mean, this is so much in here. I didn't expect all of it. Just mine it away. If you want to throw in some dirt over time, this will be great for filling raised beds. It's got some earth in there. It's going to have lots of micronutrients in there. But this is all broken down from microbes, bacteria, fungus, mold, earthworms and look just how gorgeous that is all right let's fill up the wheelbarrow just want to show you a little bit of what I get if you want to subscribe I'll show you how I use this in my garden to put the beds to rest in the fall use it in the spring but today was really about cold composting I mean you can't beat that there's so much in there I haven't really even put a dent in there and you can see based on what I was putting in there that might have been leaves at some point right up here a little more clay maybe I was digging out an area looks a little more woody maybe some bigger debris in there it really doesn't matter now this is pretty much a hundred percent broken down which means I can plant in here right away and for instance all the green beans you see growing are coming out of here sometimes when I throw in seeds from the last year they root and do their thing because this is 100% broken down, look here's something that didn't break down. This is not going to challenge your seedlings or your transplants for nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium. When you're buying compost in a bag, if it's manure, if it's compost, no matter what it is, it can just say compost. We don't know if that's broken down 10%, 20%, 50% or 100%. If you're getting compost and you're getting manures that are being composted down and you're putting them into your bed and they're not fully broken down, when you go to plant into that, if you put in seeds or transplants, the, the compost that isn't fully broken down, and I want to stress that because it's all about being broken down. So the compost that it still has to break down in your garden, look, there's a millipede or a centipede, is going to take that nitrogen from your plant. Basically, it's going to have to continue to break down and that's what it's going to do in your soil. It's going to use the nitrogen there to break down, you know, turn into fully 100% compost. And while it's doing that, your plants are going to suffer. So composting yourself, giving this at least a year, probably two years to fully break down, this is just gold. And if you guys have ever put in manures or bag compost pile into your garden, you put in your transplants and you see the plants only get about this tall. They kind of get yellow, they're stunted. It's because it wasn't complete compost. It wasn't fully composted down. I'm even confusing myself. The bagged products can say compost, but you don't know if it's 100% broken down. And that's what we're going for, is just letting everything that you put into here break down into something beautiful like this and you can put it throughout your garden. So this is 10 shovelfuls right there. That's going to go out into some of my beds that I'm putting to sleep. 
your standard composting or cold composting, you can see how well that works. And you just have to get started. Let it go for a year or two, and then you start mining it from the bottom like that. Hot composting is a little bit different in that you're layering in the materials, you're bringing up the heat, and instead of it taking up to two years, this can be done in, realistically, if you're lucky, 90 days, but really within six months. As it breaks down, you gotta make sure you keep turning it because it basically falls, so the volume drops, and then you don't have a lot of airflow through there. And if you don't have airflow, it's gonna to start to smell. So I transition my hot compost over this way. It gets thrown into here at the end of fall, tarp goes over it, and then what I have left was what I'm using again for this fall and spring is just beautiful compost through the warm composting method, uh, through the hot composting method. And hot composting is really bringing the temperatures up to 140 degrees. I think I keep saying warm, cold, warm. So hot composting, speeds up the process, but it's much more labor intensive. And then in here I have leaves. I'll show you leaf composting, leaf mold, different ways to really just build organic matter into your garden. And the basic ways that I do it is uh, leaves and grass. You can see there, just leaves to create leaf mold, hot composting and cold composting. Hope this gives you some inspiration to start a basic cold compost pile, it's really worth it. You can't beat what you can make for free once you spend a little bit in the cost of setup, putting in your time and labor, and it's just waiting around to get beautiful, beautiful compost like this to take care of your garden. A lot of this is gonna go into my no-dig garden in the spring. It'll be six inches of this stuff, and I'll just plant directly into it. Thanks for watching, please subscribe. We'll be doing a lot on composting this fall.